I don't think I did these any better. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's me, Maddie, and welcome back to another video if you are new to my channel. Hi, my name is Maddie. Most of the time I do not I'll have lights wrapped around me, but because it is December, it is the festive season, so therefore I am, lap I am wrapped in lights. Not very well, um, and I annoy myself with them, but nonetheless, I am wrapped up in them. So today, we're going to be talking about my most disappointing and just in general disappointing reads of 2020. Now, I'm going to start off with my most disappointing, and I'm going to work my way to just disappointing books, because uh, I have two books that were really, really disappointing. Um, I gave most of these two stars, and I only, one of them was a three star I will explain why they were disappointing later. I will not go into spoilers, but if you guys would like to read my reviews on some of these books, because I do have some reviews up on there, I will tell you guys when I have a review, then I will leave them linked down below. And I will also leave a my, my bi-monthly wrap-ups uh, in the description box, and you will be able to find them there and where I talk more in depth about the books. So, let's talk about my most disappointing reads of 2020. Okay, so I think we should talk about my most disappointing book. Out of all of the, a lot of books I've read, because I'm filming this a little bit in advance, so I don't know for sure how many books I've read, but I've read over 20 books, and my goal this year was 20. So I've read, currently as of filming this, about 46 books. Mind blown. Hopefully I'll be able to get to 50. But out of those 46 books that I've read so far this year, my most disappointing was Hollowpox, The Hunt for Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. Now, this book I thought I was going to be giving a 5 out of 5 star rating to because I loved the first two. And even though the first time I read Wondersmith, which is the sequel to Nevermore, I gave it a 4.5 upon a reread, I ended up bumping it up to a 5. So to say I had high hopes for this book would be an understatement. And this is a Nevermore book. You can't go wrong with Nevermore. At least that's what I thought. This book just felt like a bridge book and basically a lot of people who have rated this uh, three or lower agree with that statement. The only really important things that happen in this book is the introduction to Sub 9 and also the end of this book where they deal with other things, okay? They deal with other things. Like I said, I'm not going to go into spoilers. So besides those two things, this book is completely pointless. And if you ask me, I think the author, Jessica Townsend, could have found a way to incorporate those two important things into the fourth book, which would have been the third book if this one had not been written. This just felt like a bridge book that drove Morgan to the re like that drove Morgan to the end of the book. I will be continuing on with the series because uh, the fourth book should have a lot of Ezra Squall, and Ezra Squall is the best character in this entire book. Sorry, Hawthorne, it's just true. Okay, he's the best, and if there isn't a lot of Ezra Squall in the next book, I will not be continuing because the way this book left off, there should be a lot of Ezra Squall, and I will be mad if there isn't, okay? So, yes, this would have to be my most disappointing book of 2020. I'm very, very sad about it, but I will be reading the fourth book because, again, Ezra. Purely because of Ezra. And then my second most disappointing book of 2020 would be Crescent City or House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. So, um, I gave this also, I also gave this two out of five stars. The reason this isn't my most disappointing is because I haven't loved everything Sarah J. Mass has written. And I'm no longer supporting the author. So, I will be reading the sequel, I think as soon as I can get it from the library, so not until six months after release. And even though that is still supporting the author, I will just be getting the book from a different library, not from the one in town, because my library doesn't have a lot of funding for it. So I guess I am, in a way, still supporting Sarah J. Mass, but I'm not going to be buying her books and going to signings and following her on her social medias, because I just don't want to support her anymore. So the reason this book was so disappointing is, first of all, this is an adult fantasy novel, and I thought there would be a lot more stuff happening. The for like 600 pages of this book could have been cut and honestly the best character died the first 50 pages. Connor, R.I.P. 
Uh, and this just, it was so unnecessarily long in my opinion and not, like, nothing happened. And honestly, I didn't remember much of this when I went to do a live show on it. I could barely remember a single thing about this book. And I just... I was really, really disappointed. I really thought I was going to love this book. I was very highly anticipating it, but it just, it did not go places. It did not do things. Bryce is the main character, and she felt like a mixture of Aelin and Farah. And then people also have suspicions that Hunt is the love interest in this book, and if you, if you can call him a love interest, because... I wouldn't, uh, but he is the love interest in this book, and people suspect that he's only going to be the love interest in the first book, and then he's no longer going to be the love interest, and all I want to say is no, okay, Sarah, don't do that, okay, Adius, like, the people think that she's going to, Bryce is going to go after Adius, Adius is a mixture, is he is a co copy and paste of Rice Stand, okay, don't do it, all right, I did not read this big book, for, like, Hunt and Bryce and then not get Hunt and Bryce, okay? I don't want it. I, I mean, I also don't want to support you anymore, so I guess, like, I don't really have a say in this, but I don't want this because I, I didn't even get any Hunt and Bryce in this, so I don't want no Hunt, okay? I want to have more Hunt in the next book, all right? Sorry. A little bit of a tangent there, but yes, two out of five star. I am disappointed, but just like Hollow Pox, I will be reading the sequel, but my lights are slowly unraveling around me. Um, but I will not be buying the next book. So there we go. All right, so let's talk about the other books that I thought were at least going to be entertaining and good, but they weren't and they were disappointing. These are books that, um, weren't my most disappointing, but I just had heard a lot of good things about them, so I thought they'd be better. So let's start off with The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. This was a book that my granny and I buddy read together, and we both disliked this book. The main thing about this book was that it was really, really boring. The writing style is absolutely gorgeous. I will give it that. But that's really all it has going for it is the writing style. Everything felt like it took two sentences more to say and do than it needed. And the description of this book says that a young man is determined to free his people by killing the witch. But this young man doesn't go and try to kill the witch until the last 50 pages of the book. And so you're just reading like, how many pages is this? Okay, so it's only about 300, about 400 pages. So like for 300 and like, 25 pages you're just like building up to this climax that wasn't even very good I had to get the audiobook for this book to push myself through it and I had just heard that this book was amazing and so I was really really hopeful and excited that I was going to love it but I didn't I I did not like this book so I was disappointed but because I had never read a Kelly Barnhill book before I just had good, heard good things about this book I wasn't as disappointed as the other two that I've already talked about so now we're going to move on to the final two books on this list now I gave both of these books three stars but I both gave their uh predecessor the first book in the series a five out of five so I had high expectations that just weren't really met and so we'll start off with Percy Jackson and the Sea of Monsters so one of my Goodreads friends says this is her least favorite in the series so that didn't really start off that good and I honestly had to force myself to read this book I just I didn't find it super entertaining and I was disappointed and all of that stuff, but I still give it three out of five stars because I still I do still love Percy and Annabeth, and I love 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 Tyson. Okay, Tyson is the best. Okay, fight me. He's adorable, and I love him, and we need to protect him at all costs. Okay, at least in this book, I don't know what he is like in the future of the series, but we need to protect him right now. Okay, um, and so I had to force myself to read this book and finish it, but I did still enjoy it a little bit. I gave it three out of five stars, and. I am so excited to read Rick Rowan. I just didn't enjoy this book as much as I enjoyed the first one. And then the final book, I didn't really have a lot to say on Sea of Monsters, but this one, um, if you've 
been on my channel for a little while, you probably already know what the final book is, and that is The Leviathan Prince by C.K. Miller. Now, I give the first book, The Phoenix Host by C.K. Miller, a 5 out of 5 star. It is going to be on one of my on my favorite books of 2020's list. But this book, I had a lot of expectations because of how much I love the first book, and these are indie published books, by the way, just in case you wanted to go support the author. They're indie published. Um, and this just this book didn't meet my expectations. The characters didn't feel like they were the same. Um, the plot felt very thin and flimsy. And I was just really, really bored. I had to force myself to read these books. And like all the books on this list, the main thing is I had to sit down and forcibly read them. Otherwise, I would have DNF'd them. And you don't want to have to do that because that is just heartbreaking in my opinion especially when all these books you had high expectations with and these high expectations just weren't met and that is what happened with this book specifically I had very high expectations but they weren't met now there were some points in this book that I did really like for um example which I'm not spoilers no spoilers you know so round table round table scene was amazing and it was beautiful and like I amazing like that scene is five out of five on its own okay um so i did really enjoy that scene and i did enjoy seeing ikan and kia interact because i love them a lot i love ikan you know he's a sweet boy and i love him um but other than that this book just was a little bit disappointing so there we go um but yes i will be reading on in the series so yes Alright guys, so that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a big fat thumbs up. And subscribe down below because I post videos on this channel every single Monday. And so I'll see you guys all next Monday for another video in my fun little 2020 wrap up. Where we're talking about, you know, most disappointing reads, um, the books I didn't act, my favorite books of 2020, and then eventually the final book, the final video in this little series will be all the books I read in 2020 so I'm very excited for that not to film it or edit it because I hate editing my videos that are that long because I can't shut up but you get the gist of what I'm saying so yeah if you guys have any videos you would like to see on my channel please comment them down below I consider every single suggestion and so far I've gotten three and I have done all three of those suggestions in their own personal playlist right here so yes thank you guys so much for watching I'm going to go and yeah and don't forget, I'm still a freaking bulldozer. Bye, everyone.